Hello again guys, today I'm going to be demonstrating the lethal bow animal trap. Like always I'll give you a quick demo of the trap, it'll give you a better picture in your mind while I'm going through the parts and the setup. Okay we'll go through the parts, we've got the two support posts. Um, depending on the size of the animal you're planning on harvesting is going to determine the size of your posts. The bigger, the taller the animal means you're going to want to bind your bow at the correct height of that game. These posts are about 1m10 long, spiked at one end and tapered at the other. When these posts are driven into the ground, they're going to be about 10 centimetres apart from each other. Right, the next part is the bow. You could just make a simple bunch bow, which is just uh, two to four strips of sapling, ideally of equal thickness, and then just bind them top to tail. So you've got a thick and a thin end at both ends of your bow. I don't really like these type of bows, they're really shite. Um, the thin sapling strips, they tend to dry out really quickly. When the bunch bow is drawn back for long periods of time, it um, really quickly starts to take the bow shape. And when it does eventually trigger, it will be losing a lot of its power. What I do prefer to use is the uh, tilted stick type bow. Um, it's pretty easy to make. I've used U for mine, it's my favourite bow material. Um, but there's loads of other great trees that you can use for survival bows. Um, hickory, maple, beech, oak, ash. I'm sure there's a bunch of other good species uh, as well, but I can only really recommend what I've worked with. All you need is a good straight stick of green wood or a sapling. Ideally it's not free as you can find. This one's about 1m50 one long and about 5cm thick. You want to find the natural curve in the stick. If it's not obvious you just want to stand it up and put a little bit of pressure on it and it will bow out. The outside bend of the curve is called the back of the bow and the inside curve is called the belly. You want to leave the back of the bow untouched. It's the back that's going to receive most of the tension and any scratches or damage to it is going to cause the bow to snap. Okay, I'm going to start removing material from the belly of the bow, start tillering it and getting it tapered in. Right, that's one end done. Now I'll just do the other side. Okay, once you've got that basic bow shape, you want to notch the ends for the string. They only have to be deep enough to accommodate the string and just try not to damage the back of the bow. When it comes to the string, I'm sure there's dozens of materials you can use, both natural and man-made. Uh, linen, hemp, sinew, rawhide, bank line, paracord, or even just a boot lace if that's all you've got. I'm just using a piece of 6mm cotton cord, it's all I've got, but it'll do the trick. I'm going to be using a bowline knot on both ends of my string. Okay, we're going to get the bow strung. What you're going to do is put the bow down into your foot, step into the bow, and use your thigh to support the middle of the bow. Hold it from the top. What we're going to do is use your body weight to pull down and put your string on. When you strung your bow, ideally you want about 5 to 6 inches from your handle to your string, which is about 13 to 15 centimetres. Now it's strung, I'll draw back on the bow and see how it's curving. When I find it's curving more on one side, I'll just remove a bit more material on the opposite side, and I'll just repeat this until I'm happy with it. Um, once the bow is binded to the posts, I'll uh, weigh the draw weight of the bow, and I'll find out what power we're getting from it. The next part is what I'm going to call the trigger stick. The length depends on the draw of the bow, so it's best to make it a bit longer and then just trim it down when you're setting it up. You want to use a strong dead wood stick for this part. Um, this is going to be holding the draw weight of the bow when it's cocked, so uh, you know it really has to be pretty strong. The next bit I'm going to call the trigger board. I've used dead wood for this piece. It's about 35 centimetres long and about 5 centimetres wide. And then I've just beaver cut around the bottom. This is where the um, trip wire cordage will go from here across the trail to your peg. And then the peg is sharpened at one end 
and tapered at the other and then I've just beaver cut around here and that's just to accommodate the trip line cordage. Alright the last part other than the cordage are the spears, the arrows, whatever you want to call them. No fletchings are needed. Arrows are fletchings to stabilise the arrow and put a rotation on it as it flies through the air. These arrows are only going to be travelling about 40-50 centimetres before they hit the target so they're just not needed. Um, for the shafts I've used hazel and then I've just notched it on one end on the thickest end. That's just to accommodate the bowstring. <coughs> Um, you can just select straight pieces, add your head and you're good to go. But if you've got a bit more time, you can collect a load of nice straight shafts, debark them and bind them together. They'll dry a lot straighter that way and then you can perfect them a little bit by hand or just heat them over a flame and straighten out any kinks. I've made a few different heads. You could just fire hard on the shop and the tips of the shafts, but I found they fly a lot better with a weighted head. Plus they'll cause a lot more damage when they do at the target. Um, you could just add regular arrow heads if you have any, but anything sharp and pointy will do the job. I've binded most of these with an epoxy glue, but pine pitch glue, when it's made right, dries just as hard as epoxy. Um, just a few examples of heads. This is just an old decorating scraper that I've cut, cut to shape and sharpened it up with a file, but they're really sharp and uh, yeah, they're probably my favourites. This is just an old one from a couple of times ago when I practised this trap. Um, it's been dinged a few times, but I'll still put it through the trap again. Um, this one's just a piece of glass. It's not very pretty, but again, it's very sharp. On this one, I've just fire hardened the tip um, and then sharpened it. Again, I'll, I'll put that through the trap. These really are just examples of um, different heads, natural natural materials that you can stick on the ends of these things. This one's, my camera's not focusing on it, but it's it's a bone tip. And um, this is actually on a crossbow bolt that I've made. I've got my little homemade crossbow out today, testing it out as well. So these are really just examples. Um, this is just oak, been fire hardened, and you can get some really great heads with these. You can make them pretty big. You know, they're obviously the, uh, the wood's a lot lighter than metal, so you can get some pretty nasty heads on there. And then this one, probably not the best material. It's slate, but it's really easy to work with. Um, you know, you can make them really quickly. Obviously, if it hits bone or hits a tree, it's going to break. But you know, if it hits flesh, it's going to it's going to pierce through it. So yeah, they're really just examples. These ones, these are, you know, like I said, they're just crossbow bolts. Right, that's all the parts. I'll quickly get it set up and I'll give you a few demos of the trap. I found a nice deer trail. I've driven in both support posts to the side and facing the trail. I've binded the bow at the correct height for my game. Hammered the peg at the opposite side of the trail. I've binded the trip line to the end of the trigger board. I've drawn the bowstring and I've cut the trigger stick to the correct length. While the bow was drawn, I measured out the trip line cordage and tied it to the peg. Before I on the trap, I'll quickly measure the power of the bow. Um, the guidelines for power needed for bow hunting is uh, about 25 to 30 pound draw for small to medium game about 40 to 60 pound draw for larger game like deer. I don't think this trap needs as much power as what they recommend because it's such a close range that you're going to be shooting the animal but it's still good to have uh, you know in the in inside that guideline. I'm using this to to weigh the the draw weight on it. I'll set it to zero. And I'm going to pull it back as far as my trigger stick. saying 51 nearly 51 pound draw weight so 40 to 60 for large game that's um, you know that's more than enough I could take this bow off and actually go you know bow hunting with it take deer boar things like that it's all good all right let's get it armed and test it out
Okay guys, I really don't mean to sound patronising, but this is an extremely dangerous trap. Um, once this thing's set, you don't want to go anywhere near the direction to where it's pointing. When you're practicing this trap, you don't always need to put a lethal point on your arrows either. Um, so yeah, please don't leave these things set in public woodlands where a dog or maybe a person is going to walk into it. This trap's a killer and it doesn't really care who it kills. So yeah, just take care guys. Okay, thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Take care, be safe and happy trapping.